Welcome to Inside the Summit League. Got baseball and softball and track all coming up shortly. A story from Denver on the very good women's golf program that they've got going on there. But first, another week and another new head coach in men's basketball in the Summit League. A couple of them, as a matter of fact. One of them, though, is in Fargo, where David Richmond takes over for Saul Phillips at North Dakota State. And we've got David on the line right now. And Coach, first, congratulations. This had to be kind of a fun thing, first of all, to go tell your wife and your kids that you got the job oh this has been a blast and absolutely you, you think and talk about these conversations and you imagine them over and over and over again and you play different scenarios and and i think in moments like this you really find that the trust who's in your foxhole all those things and fortunately for not only myself but again like we just talked about my friends and family you know, it, everything has worked out extremely well so far all right, you've been there as an assistant with Tim Miles and Greg McDermott and with uh, Saul Phillips, but it just seemed like now, especially now, was your time to take over the program, wasn't it? Well, you always hope those things, Tom. The loyalty word is, is a big word in, in anything you do day to day, and you hope that you, you've earned it. Again, since Saul left, or Saul, Saul took the head job here six or seven, eight years ago, so this is what I've tried to set myself up for, to handle everything professionally to be the next head coach here. But until the position is open, until you're in those scenarios, you just really don't know. Gene didn't have to do anything. Just because I've been here this amount of years, or this, you know, this is an attractive job for a lot of reasons. There would have been a, a, a lot of great candidates with more experience than me. All right, David, when you sit down with recruits, in your experience, do players come and play for a school, or do they come and play for a coach? You know, to me, uh, Tom, and this you know, might sound crazy, but I hope it's neither. I hope they play for each other. That's what I, I really care about, and that's what, you know, obviously the school is important, you know, that where they can get an education, and, and, you know, college is the greatest four or five years of your life. So you want to put yourself in a position where you can be happy that way. And, and it's my job to prepare them to play, but I want them to be out there playing for each other, having fun. And if they're able to do those things, um, having fun, playing for each other, um, and obviously along the way representing a school, a community, a, a state, um, I, I think that's um, a, a great thing. A lot of changes going on in Fargo. The Bison Sports Arena is being renovated now. And is it going to be a huge challenge over the next couple of years not to have really a true home for basketball? No question. And that's what I you know, relayed. You know, as Gene asked me, challenges and concerns, um, we're very excited about where we're going to play. You know, for our home games, and, and to be honest with you, it's going to be, um, you know, in a lot of ways nicer than the Bison Sports Arena. But if you watch my press conference and listen to our press conference, you know, in sports, I grew up on a football field, so you know, I learned that there may be even more so than a basketball. But you become creatures of habit. Uh, you get into a, a routine, a daily routine of when and where you're going to do those things, and there's a lot of uncertainty. Not only where we're going to practice at different times, but where do we watch film? You know, where are our guys going to change? You know, the, the laundry stuff. You know, I told my wife she better be prepared to do our guys' laundry at nights too. <laughs> but, you know, those are, those are obviously questions and concerns. But, again, I'm going to go back to, you know, the people that, that in the administration, I know they're going to set us up for, you know, to be as successful as possible. But that's going to be a message that I deliver to our staff real soon that, hey, this is what it is, guys. No complaining. All right, our thanks to David Richmond, the new men's basketball head coach at North Dakota State. And here is how uh, the cards have fallen, so to speak, so far in this Summit League shuffle. We've got five new faces in play. Richmond in for Phillips, who is now at the University of Ohio. Fort Wayne has promoted assistant coach John Kaufman to take over for Tony Jassick, who went on to Jacksonville. Former Nebraska assistant Craig Smith comes in at South Dakota. Jason Gardner replaces Todd Howard at IUPUI. And Jim Molinari has resigned now at West. Illinois, no replacement named there as of yet. Up next, is it a dynasty in Denver? The women's golf team has won 10 straight conference titles, but can they do it again in their Summit League debut? This is an epic sports commercial. There's no Hollywood director. There's no million dollar budget. There's no slow motion or stadiums filled with crowds. It's just us. Us. Real athletes.
athletes. Real athletes who want to get better, get stronger, and make the starting lineup. Be healthy and active. And this is where we'll do it. The Sanford Sports Complex, a game-changing destination. Learn more at SanfordSports.com. So, how was the business meeting? Business as usual. We went round and round about the same old things. Everyone always dances around the issues. No one ever wants to show their hand. So we had a bite to eat and came home early. Need a place to live it up? Grand Falls Casino Resort is the place to live it up for a big night out, just a short drive away. Grand Falls Casino Resort. Time to buy a Honda Accord? We don't call up the spring into a Honda sales event for nothing. What makes this Accord so special? Rear view camera, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility, all standard. I'm not convinced. It's an IIHS 2014 top safety pick. There's a bear behind you. Way to stay on your toes, Roberts. This is not a drill. Get a great deal during the spring into a Honda sales event. Now, at your Honda dealer. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health. Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Well, the University of Denver has already won league championships in the Summit League in women's soccer and in swimming and diving. The Pioneers are now poised to take a swing at a title in women's golf. Denver has already won 10 consecutive conference championships, but can they do it again this year in their first year in the Summit League? At the University of Denver, we're very fortunate to have a host of very good athletic teams. Among the best over the past decade, the Pioneer Women's Golf Team. Ten straight conference championships, 12 straight trips to the NCAA tournament, and this year a chance to make history. For the third consecutive season, they'll be playing in a new conference. And for the third consecutive season, they'll be gunning for another conference title. Lindsey Cool took over as head coach at the midway point of last season, and the Pioneers never missed a beat. Cool, who spent seven years as DU's assistant coach, is looking to change her team's mental approach to the season. Translation, embrace, and don't be afraid to talk about some rather lofty goals, like getting back to nationals. Um, so I think we're very open and transparent about what we want to do this year, and it is to make it to the national championship as well as hopefully win another conference championship. I do talk about winning, I do talk about rankings, I talk about statistics and how I think we need to improve and get there. The formula for getting to Nationals is pretty simple. Five players, all playing well at the same time. But having all those ingredients come together at just the right time is another matter. This year, DU has six golfers on its roster. Even better, all six are world-class golfers that'll elevate the internal competition to an all-time high. Well, all of them are ranked in the top 600 in the World Amateur Rankings, and we have depth this year. So I'm just looking forward to it. I think there will be some changes in the lineup throughout the entire year um, because I know, like I said, the depth is so great this year. So I'm looking forward to that. We've all talked about this and we all want to play. We're here for golf and we want to continue to play golf after college, all of us. When everyone is like that on the team, it, it just gets multiplied um, and it gets way stronger. So I think it can, can be a really good year. I think it's a good thing because we have six strong players, so there's a lot of internal competition and we're always going to be battling for a place in the team, so it's just going to make push us and make us better. I think it'll be a lot of fun this year and uh, see what we can do and how far we can like push the limits, um, what, what we can do and like hopefully win a tournament this year, if not more than one. Um, and set some records maybe. All-American Tanya Daffenrood leads the way for Denver, but last year's Western Athletic Conference medalist will get lots of help from junior Rachel Watton, who captured Sunbelt Conference medalist honors as a freshman. In addition, sophomore Elise Smittinger, all-conference in her freshman year, gives Denver a terrific one-two-three punch. A sure sign of a good team is when every member of that team is pursuing the same goal, and this year's Pioneer Golf Squad collectively has a singular focus. If we play to our potential, this team can be really good. Um, and uh, I'm not going to like <laughs> jinx it and say that we're going to like win nationals, but I, I think we can do, like get some really good results this year and win a few tournaments. Got to get everyone to nationals. It's a, I mean, even though it's an individual sport, I mean, I want to go to nationals too. <laughs> I think we, we know we're good enough this year, and 
the freshmen coming in and uh, Izzy transferring, I think we've got a really strong team this year, so hopefully we can make a good run at it in the postseason. I think the major goal is to have a successful postseason. I think that's what we play for. Um, we would love to win another conference championship and make it to regionals and have a great chance to make it to the national championship. Having not been in the last three years, I think it's something that's on our mind and really an expectation that we do that this year. Softball is up next. North Dakota State leads the league right now, but Allie Daly is crushing it for the Coyotes as USD is coming on strong. Since 1982, the Summit League has been achieving excellence beyond providing a quality education to more than 120,000 students. The league continues to strengthen its reputation of being nationally competitive in athletics. Today, more than 3,000 elite student athletes at eight institutions embody the vision, purpose, and innovation the Summit League represents. These young men and women are reaching for the summit in both athletic and academic endeavors. Honda CRV. We've got great deals during the spring into a Honda sales event. Slow down, hot shot. The CRV has a rear view camera, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility, all standard. Is that it? And the CRV is the most durable in its class. Are those McPherson struts? Indeed. Nice work, Smith. This is not a drill. Get a great deal during the spring into a Honda sales event. Now at your Honda dealer. So, how was game night with the girls? Oh, it's just another girls' night. We ate way too much food. We sat around a lot. We had a few laughs, but it was very relaxing. Need a real girls' night out? Grand Falls Casino Resort is the place to live it up for a big night out, just a short drive away. Grand Falls Casino Resort. My favorite time of day to be fly fishing is early in the morning when the sun's just coming up and you start to see the fish rise for dry flies. What I love about fly fishing is seeing the mouth come out and take that fly and go back down. It's awesome. I know I've really helped a customer when I see that they're excited about taking their new equipment and trying it on the river. I'm Mike Dufresne and I'm one of the fly fishing experts at Shields. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back now to softball and a series sweep over the weekend for North Dakota State and a couple of dramatic wins for USD. Pick it up with the Coyotes at home against Western Illinois on Friday, beautiful afternoon in Vermilion. Nina Maggio with a rip for the leather next there and a play at the plate coming up. Monica Rondon is safe and Western Illinois up two to nothing. But that is Matley Jones. Solar home run, a solo home run, I should say, in the fifth. Makes it a one run game. Coyotes down two to one. And we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. And there's a coyote third and second and first. Loaded up for Allie Daly, who comes through. And the walk-off win as two runs will come in in the bottom of the seventh, and the Coyotes take game one, three to two over Western Illinois. I just remember rounding first base and just yelling, go home, go home, making sure both runners got in, but it was pretty exciting. And Daly would do it again in game two. That is she, bottom of the first inning this time instead of bottom of the seventh, but that'll work, a two-run job for Allie Daly. And then some USD, that's Lindsey Boyd picking it and throwing it at third base for the Coyotes. Matt Lee Jones again will drive in two more in the sixth for USD, and the Coyotes win this one 4-1. to one. They take three straight from Western Illinois. In Brookings, North Dakota State takes three in a row against South Dakota State. Logan Moreland homers twice in game one. That one came in the first inning. She would homer again later in the seventh. Sammy Bingham comes back with a solo shot for the Jackrabbits to tie the game at one after one inning, but that was the only run allowed by North Dakota State pitcher Krista Menke. She gets her 17th and 18th wins of the season. The Bison beat the Jacks 5-1, 14-2, and 12-0. 
And in Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne takes two out of three from Omaha. Alex Bousquet, three-run home run for Fort Wayne as the Dons win game one three to nothing. Miranda Kramer struck out 15 for IPFW to get the win there. Fort Wayne takes game two three to one, but Omaha comes back and takes game three six to three. So with three weeks to play in the regular season in Summit League softball, standings look like this. Andy Eshu and IPFW at the top. They will play each other this weekend in Fargo. South Dakota will be at home against IUPUI. Baseball coming up next. Western Illinois busting out the bats big time against Fort Wayne. to buy a Honda Accord? We don't call it the Spring into a Honda Sales Event for nothing. What makes this Accord so special? Rear view camera, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility, all standard. I'm not convinced. It's an IIHS 2014 top safety fit. There's a bear behind you. Way to stay on your toes, Roberts. This is not a drill. Get a great deal during the Spring into a Honda Sales Event. Now, at your Honda dealer. These are places of excellence where big efforts yield big results. The places where perfection is perfected. But without the players, without the performance, these are only places. The stage is set. Now, exceed yesterday. Choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. So, how was the business meeting? Business as usual. We went round and round about the same old things. Everyone always dances around the issues. No one ever wants to show their hand. So we had a bite to eat and came home early. Need a place to live it up? Grand Falls Casino Resort is the place to live it up for a big night out, just a short drive away. Grand Falls Casino Resort. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Now to baseball. Western Illinois scored 43 runs in four wins over the weekend. Here are the highlights. But before we get to the Western Illinois offensive onslaught, starting Brookings with South Dakota State hosting Minnesota, and the Gopher pitchers were all over the place. Paul Jacobson gets hit there. Jake Ratt scores. Minnesota pitchers gave up nine walks. They hit three Jacks batters in the game. And SDSU gets five in the first, four more in the second. Cody Sherrill beats that out. And South Coast State is up 9-1 to one after two innings. Tyler Shannon gets the start and the win for South Dakota State. He gives up three hits, strikes out a couple, but gets the W there. Aaron Mashbitz is leading the Jacks in slugging and home runs and runs batted in and runs scored so far. Sixth home run of the season for Mashbitz. And the Jacks were off and running in this one. Paul Jacobson follows it up with a double to right center. Matt Johnson going to come around and score. And the Jackrabbits beat the Gophers again. 13-4 is the final in this one. Western Illinois, meanwhile, at Fort Wayne on Saturday. Jamison Henning for Western Illinois scores Zach Burling there. Aaron Michael gets the shutout, and Western wins game one of this series 3 to nothing. Game two, right to the bottom of the ninth. Fort Wayne down by a run. Kevin Worth with a double that scores two. Worth had four runs batted into the ball game, and the Dons win this one 9-8 to eight to make it 1-1. One to one. So far in the series, two more on Sunday. Western Illinois will go nuts in this first game on Sunday. Travis Stafford had three hits, including that home run, his first home run of the season for Stafford, and Western was just getting started. Jake Moore had two uh, hits, drove in four runs. Neil DeCook scores four times. He is the player of the week, by the way, and the Leathernecks win this one 21-14. to And they come back with 15 hits and 11 more runs in game two on Sunday. Matt Risden to the track. That's going to drive in three Leathernecks. And Western Illinois up five to nothing early. Chris Toshida had three hits for Western Illinois. Up the middle here, Eric Mackey comes around to score. Kevin Wirth had three more RBI for Fort Wayne in this one. He is third in the league right now. But Western wins this one 11 to nine. And they take three out of four from Fort Wayne. In Fargo, 
Omaha taking on North Dakota State, and that is David Ernst, a junior from Fargo. He goes eight innings, strikes out six, uh, did not give up a run in the game, but he did not get the win either. And look at this nifty little piece of D by Tyler Spleekle for Omaha. Made the grab. That is lovely. Daniel Jewett will drive in two runs. The only two runs of the ball game with a single in the top of the 10th inning. And the Mavs win this one 2 to nothing in game one. Another Omaha shutout coming up in game two. Caleb Polenski will come to the plate here for the Mavericks. That is a rip to left. A couple of R's B.I. And the Mavs jump to a 4 to nothing lead in the first inning on the hit there by Polenski. Daniel Jewett coming up again here for Omaha. Another RBI base hit for the Mavericks by Jewett. And the Mavs are up 9 to nothing after four innings. And they would get a shutout performance on the mound again in this one. Steven Schoonover is the pitcher of the week. He allows just one hit, strikes out three, and Omaha sweeps North Dakota State 10 to nothing in game two. Now, they were supposed to play two more on Sunday, but those were canceled by weather. Two of those games between Western Illinois and Fort Wayne, by the way, were non-league. So here are your current standings with Fort Wayne on top. The Dons will host South Dakota State coming up this weekend. A young woman at USD following in the footsteps of broadcasting legend Tom Brokaw. That's our campus spotlight coming up next. So, how was game night with the girls? Oh, just another girl's night. We ate way too much food. We sat around a lot. We had a few laughs. But it was very relaxing. Need a real girl's night out? Grand Falls Casino Resort is the place to live it up for a big night out just a short drive away. Grand Falls Casino Resort. CRV. We've got great deals during the spring into a Honda sales event. Slow down, hot shot. The CRV has a rear view camera, Bluetooth, Pandora compatibility, all standard. Is that it? And the CRV is the most durable in its class. Are those McPherson struts? Indeed. Nice work, Smith. This is not a drill. Get a great deal during the spring into a Honda sales event. Now at your Honda dealer. This isn't an epic sports commercial. There's no Hollywood director. There's no million dollar budget. There's no slow motion. Or stadiums filled with crowds. It's just us. Us. Real athletes. Real athletes. Who want to get better, get stronger, and make the starting lineup. Be healthy and active. And this is where we'll do it. The Sanford Sports Complex, a game-changing destination. Learn more at SanfordSports.com. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Tom Brokaw is the most famous broadcaster to go to school at the University of South Dakota. He is, so far at least, a young woman in Vermilion might be next. Here's our campus spotlight. I decided to come to USD when my parents kind of said, Kathleen, you're going on a tour of USD. So I came here and then I kind of just ended up falling in love with it. My initial perception of the journalism school when I got here, I was actually very intimidated. For me to study where people like Al Newharth and Tom Brokaw studied, it's kind of, I feel really proud about it. One of the first things that I got involved with here on campus, I went to the student-run university newspaper, The Volant, and they were like, okay, well, what story do you want to do this week? And so it was kind of just like I dived right in, and then pretty soon I'm doing KAOR radio, helping to co-anchor, and then I'm being a production assistant for Coyote News. Welcome to Coyote News, I'm Kathleen Suri. That puts the index well above a neutral score of 50. So my first perception was that I really had the ability 
to do whatever I wanted in this department. What has always set us apart is the fact that our student media are truly independent. The students run the newspaper, they run the television station, the radio station, the newscast. It's all content that they produce. There are so many opportunities, not just the new social media marketing uh, minor, but the hands-on experience in student media. When our students graduate, they are highly desirable by the employers, not only in the region, but nationally. They know that um, the experience we're giving our students is a quality experience that prepares them not only for the entry-level positions, but the positions 10, 20 years down the line when they're going to be running the shop, wherever they're at. This is Kathleen Suri with South Dakota Public Broadcasting. Kathleen we hired as a freshman. Kathleen was fearless. But Kathleen is also teaching me about social media, Kathleen is teaching me uh, how to consume news, how the younger uh, generation is consuming news. I think at USD you get a bigger picture. And it's my experience in this business as, as how it's grown and how it's changed is that you have to be able to do it all. And that's why Kathleen is going to be successful. I had no idea how to run a camera before I came to college, absolutely no idea. But the professors and the advisors and all the student producers and the student talent made me so comfortable with the setting. And now I can confidently operate a camera, I can conduct interviews, I can record B-roll, I can shoot, I can edit. And so kind of having all of that background experience is so beneficial and you get it because of the hands-on experience here in the journalism department. Here at USD, I've really learned that there's so much more to the college experience than just sitting in a classroom and learning from a professor. It's really about getting out into the community. The opportunities for volunteer work are so vast. There are so many different things that you can get involved in. It doesn't matter what you care about, there are ways to make a difference here at USD. One of my favorites here at USD is Dakotathon. This organization supports Ch Children's Miracle Network by raising money to support our local hospital in Sioux Falls. Imagine a bunch of college students staying up for 24 hours straight all to benefit Children's Miracle Network. It's a pretty cool thing. It's really rewarding and just seeing everyone come together as a group, as college students, as a community is really rewarding. Volunteer Opportunities is about experiences and these are going to help us grow as people and be able to go out in the workforce and do a good job at what we do. To sum up my experience at USD, I guess it would have to be three words, uh, experience, opportunity, and reward. USD has been the best choice that I possibly could have picked for a college. Thanks to everybody in Vermilion. Thanks to all of our member schools. We'll see you next week on Inside the Summer League.